So I'm in Southampton and I am on my way in the van, as you can see, to Stonehenge. And uh, I have had, I've had a number of trips to Stonehenge and I have to say I'm going back with a degree of, no, I am going back with very low expectations. <laughs> and the reason for that is I have been to Stonehenge on many occasions now. I think I must be at seven or eight occasions where I have traveled to Stonehenge in the hope of being there at the right time in the right conditions uh, with some nice light if it was landscape or sunset or with some nice clear skies with the Milky Way in the right kind of spot. And so far, it just really hasn't worked out. I'll show you quickly some of the photographs that I have managed to get up until now. No moon above, just faintest light of stars and stars and stars. Okay, so there you go. That's the sort of stuff that I have managed to grab myself at Stonehenge. And tonight though, tonight is, well, the clue is in the word tonight. Tonight it's gonna be a night photography shoot, an astro shoot. And there's a couple of things on my mind. One, I want to demonstrate a way to take photographs of the night sky as if you're a beginner and as if you've got relatively little prior knowledge but you have set your gear up in the manner that I recommended in my first video on this channel and I'll put a link to that both in the description and on screen. So how do you set up this kind of shoot if you are a beginner? The second thing I want to try, uh, I'm not going to just try, the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to demonstrate how you can use some really old, I say really old, some relatively old camera technology like the Nikon D300 to photograph the night sky and get some decent results especially now that the software solutions in the likes of Lightroom have improved so much since that camera came out. That is the plan for today. So I better concentrate on my driving and I'll see you when I get there. Now, this would make a lovely sunset sky. Unfortunately, it is going to clear by the time we get to sunset, which is a bit of a shame because just look at it, it's gorgeous. Imagine all of that just lit up with beautiful pink and reddish glow at sunset. Wouldn't that be awesome, especially with Stonehenge in the foreground? Sadly, that is not gonna happen. Never mind. Welcome back. Good evening. It is just gone eight o'clock and in about an hour and 10 minutes, hour and a quarter, we should have the end of astronomical twilight and have proper dark. Uh, the skies are clear, uh, as I can show you right now on weather and radar as at eight o'clock and going forward to quarter past nine, half past nine, we're still looking clear as a bell, which is fantastic news. Um, no 
threat of cloud anywhere, which is wonderful. Now, uh, also uh, looking on photo pills and my planner there, uh, we have uh, that wonderful kind of celestial um, arrangement where the uh, where the Milky Way core will rise um, in a position where it can be photographed with Stonehenge from the public path. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm just hoping that there isn't going to be an entire horde of photographers there because every other astrophotography geek in uh, England will also know uh, if they're at all interested in Stonehenge, that this is going to be a good night to photograph it. So I want to get there fairly soon, so I won't be very long with this. Um, and uh, again, once more, just checking on photo pills. Um, the, um, here we go, yeah, the Milky Way Galactic Core will rise from about nine o'clock. It will only be up until about 10 o'clock and it will only reach a maximum elevation of about five degrees so it's only just going to pop above the horizon we may not see very much of it depending on what's on the horizon okay and then in terms of the uh, the moon the cycle of the moon we have 0 0.9 percent waxing crescent moon it will not rise now until 7 33 in the morning so we have a properly dark night. The only light we'll have to contend with will be light pollution from uh, local towns and cities such as Amesbury and Salisbury. Uh, and then the traffic, of course, whizzing up the A303 in the background behind the stones. So that's about it. And uh, it's time I got out of the van, uh, got my pack on and got down to Stonehenge. So uh, I may not get to say very much on site, uh, largely because I th I'm expecting there to be other photographers there and it's, it's not good to be using all this lighting and stuff and, uh, with other photographers about because everyone will be wanting to get their shot. Uh, if it is possible, I'll do a little bit of camera, but uh, it may not be. Uh, I think I might have explained earlier in another video uh, I've got two camera kits with me. One is the D300 with the 17 to 55 millimeter f2.8 zoom. Uh, so I shall use that. Uh, my plan is to uh, use that in a couple of ways. One, I shall do uh, a series of single shots that I can then uh, stack together with Starry Landscape Stacker and I also intend to use the uh, Move Shoot Move Tracker with that and while I'm fiddling around with the Nikon D300 to see just what we can eke out of that 17 year old camera uh, from the night skies while I'm fiddling around with that one I will have a time lapse running with my Z6 Two, and that will have the Nissi night filter on. And that's about it. So I'll catch you a bit later. I'm going to make this really quick because I'm still at Stonehenge and there's been a lot of photographers here. There's still one or two around. So light pollution is not going to be popular, but it's been a busy night. I don't think I've ever seen as many photographers as here. It's chilly too. Um, lots of experimentation. I have really enjoyed working briefly again with the D300. A little bit frustrating to start with, but uh, it's been good fun. And uh, it's going to be really interesting to see just how well those pictures clean up. So I've done um, a number of uh, stack shots and I've also done some long exposures on the uh, uh, with a Move Shoot Move tracker. And I think I've probably got up to as high as a two minute exposure with nice sharp, um, nice sharp stars. So it's going to be interesting to see how all of that comes out. Also, the differences in white balance will be uh, interesting to see between the, um, the Z series and the original D series cameras, because it looks quite different in camera. Uh, I 
cancelled or I uh, cut short the um, what's the word the time lapse I cut short the time lapse with the Z62 in the end because I felt I was just missing uh, too many opportunities uh, because the sky has been so good tonight it's been so good that I wanted to do some vertical uh, shots with that and I'd set up the time lapse in portrait sorry in landscape mode so uh, so I've cut that short so although I might still get a bit of a time lapse from it it'll only be a few seconds at most uh, if that okay I better sign out because my light is probably annoying other people and uh, I might do a little bit more to camera on this one when I get back to the office and do the post processing a little bit of feedback on how it's gone welcome back I am now back in my office and uh, I've spent a bit of time going through all the various pictures that I got at Stonehenge now uh, it was a bit of a mixed bunch really probably the biggest story of the night was the sheer volume <laughs> sheer volume of uh, other photographers there which meant that uh, I could only do one piece to camera and you've just seen that um, it was a much more frustrating even evening in retrospect than I knew at the time and uh, I think part of the reason for that was, well no almost the entire reason for that was the sheer volume of photographers there but not just the number of photographers but what the other photographers were doing now this is going to be a bit of a rant and I have made one of these before please if you're doing workshops with people who are new to this kind of photography can I please, please, please ask you to ensure that the first thing that you teach them before you even take them on site is what to do with their lights, with their headlamps, with their flashlights, with those little red dim lights and things even. Because uh, I think I posted online that the first 60 photographs that I took had red light spoiling the foreground. Actually, it was more than that. It was more like about 90 and uh, also eventually I abandoned the time lapse for two reasons one uh, I wanted to shoot in a different format uh, anyway I wanted to be in a portrait format rather than landscape because of the very vertical orientation of the, the Milky Way I mean I should have just done that from the start uh, but uh, the other reason was that I knew that the time lapse was just going to be a complete nightmare because there was no way I was going to be able to clean it up sufficiently uh, to make it uh, worth processing because there was so much lighting interference. I think what a lot of people don't realise, particularly if they are uh, new to night photography, is just how little light it takes to spoil a scene. So uh, I'll show you an example here. Uh, when I, was, I went to California um, a year or two back uh, for a holiday and some friends of ours uh, put us up in their uh, cabin, beautiful house actually, up in the, the mountains. And uh, one of the things I promised to do for them was take a shot of their cabin at night. And so I had in mind doing a, uh, a star trail of this of this cabin so I got down low and I lined it up so that polar north was at the apex of the roof and uh, I took the first sequence of shots just to check my composition and stuff and the inside of the property was just glowing red and I went to go and investigate the reason for this and it turned out it was because there was one small LED lamp on a telephone on a bench in their kitchen. And that was sufficient to light up the entire downstairs, open plan downstairs of the property and the upstairs balcony area. The entire um, inside of the house was red. I'll show you that on screen now. And so I had to go in and I had to cover that little LED up uh, with something um, and that was fine then I could I could take my take my shots that's how little light it takes to ruin a photograph at night because we're putting our cameras on high sensitivity mode 
and a long exposure. So even the tiniest amount of light spilling out from your uh, from the system that you've gone there with, even if you've taken the trouble to put a red headlamp on, all that does really, by the way, is help prevent your eyes, well, help ensure that your eyes can accustom themselves to uh, nighttime viewing. So your your own night sight, night vision, isn't ruined by putting on a bright lamp all the time. It will not stop the light pollution caused by that red lamp uh, to your field of view. So please turn those red lamps off, turn your headlamps off, your, your big torch million candle power lights. And please, 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 if you are doing a workshop, teach your students, guests, whatever you want to call them, uh, how what sort of lighting etiquette is needed at night. Uh, it, if you're worried about whether or not you're going to be able to see the best way of being able to work at night uh, with, a, with your camera gear, one is to get to know it by feel and by touch and by memory, knowing what is where. Uh, and two is letting your eyes get properly accustomed to the dark because you will find probably within about 20 minutes you really don't need those torchlights. Okay, that's it. Um, I've run out of time. I was going to kind of go through some uh, some of the images that I took um, yesterday uh, and uh, give you some idea of how they had how they had come out. And um, you know, I I was particularly pleased, I think, with what I managed to get out of the. Uh, 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 what's the word? Uh, well, I managed to get <laughs> out of the Nikon D three hundred, and um, you know that, f considering the age of the camera, seventeen year old camera, it did take quite a bit of teasing out, and um, you know, and I can tell from here, and you'll be able to tell uh, that it's really nowhere near as clean an image as the other images that I took on the Z six two, but for a 17 year old camera honestly I think it's pretty decent so what I'm going to do uh, I'm, I'm going to do another video when I've got time I've just run out of time today I'll do another video when I've got time where I talk through uh, some of these images and exactly how I set about getting them particularly some of the basic setup for uh, the camera I promised that to, to do a sort of basic camera setup for beginners to get these kind of shots, even on relatively cheap, uh, cheap equipment. Uh, and so I will do that as the subject of my next video. And in the meantime, I hope you'll enjoy some of these images. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. No moon above, just famous light of stars and stars and stars. So many strong.